Hey friend, in this tutorial, I am kicking off the month of March, which our focus is a ocean landscape. This is the month that my third book, Everyday Watercolor Seashores, is finally released. March 5th, 2024 is the official release date. So if you haven't yet, go order it. It's such a good book. It's definitely by far my best book I've made so far. And so this month we're kicking it off with a focus on the cover art of this book. It's not something that I cover within the book, so this is something that's totally, you know, free addition to the actual stuff that's inside the book. And we're kicking it off with how to do a smooth gradient wash. Something that I see as a really big struggle, especially with people who are just getting started with landscape painting with watercolor, is the streakiness and the inconsistencies within their background washes, like for skies or water. And so I'm gonna teach you how to get a really smooth glaze with your Mottler brush or a wash brush so you can have a really smooth, not distracting background for your skies and for your water. So if you're ready, let's dive in. So in order to paint something like this where we have a really smooth wash for the sky and then obviously as our base for the water, for the ocean, we have a really smooth wash or gradient. And most beginner artists, most people who are just getting started with watercolor will kind of have this like really uneven look in a lot of their washes. So I just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page before we dive into the more complicated steps or components for this landscape. This also happens to be the cover art for my book, Everyday Watercolor Seashores, which is released this month. I'm so excited. Um, so the first thing you'll need is a wash brush. This is an inch and a half Mottler brush. It's from the Princeton Aqua Elite series. Um, this is my absolute favorite brush to use when I'm doing big broad strokes or trying to cover a lot of area mainly because it's specifically designed to hold a lot of water and a lot of pigment. Um, I've been using Princeton brushes for about 10 years and uh, a few years ago I signed on with them to start working with them and it was after a few years of already using them just like totally on my own. But I went to a trade show with the founder of Princeton. It's this wonderful man named Howard. He's like in his 70s. So sorry, Howard, if I'm off there, but I think you're in your 70s. And he's so much fun and the sweetest, just like dad vibe uh, to him. And he told me everything about this brush and how it's made um, in Japan or the technology comes from Japan and from this brush maker that they've been using for many years. And so anyway, love this brush. It's fabulous for landscapes and fabulous for like big washes. And so one of the things that I wanna make sure we practice is I'm just gonna be using Prussian blue. It doesn't matter the color. Um, but I want to make sure we break down the wet and wet technique where we are pulling a color down to gradually lessen the value or lighten the value. Um, I use this technique a lot for gradients, um, like in skies or the backgrounds for my oceans. Um, or if I'm doing any sort of product design, I'll do it for like gradient washes and whatnot. And so I really want to make sure to break down this this whole process for you because it's used quite a bit in landscapes. So first thing I do when I grab my color is I always make sure that if I have a lot of water on my brush, um, like if it's in that milky, milky tea and coffee range, not so much cream and butter, obviously. Okay, so before I take my brush with that wash color, to my paper, I wanna make sure that I dab, I wanna make sure that I dab or get rid of the excess water um, off my brush before going to my paper. The main reason for this is I don't want a little line or puddle of extra pigment and water to creep into my piece or to my wash. I want it to be smooth. So that's one of the first mistakes. You want it to be a drier stroke to start with. So even this is a little too puddly so I'm gonna get rid of some excess water and scoop that through and make sure that it has really even and same thing with anytime I go back over the edge it kind of puddles so I'm gonna just make sure that that's really really even go over it a couple of times dry off my brush even more and really smooth that out it might seem like an unnecessary couple of steps to take but if you're noticing that you have a lot of little dark spots or streaks 
of color coming through your washes or your backgrounds, then that could be your reason. So you just need to be extra diligent about it. So now I'm cleaning off my brush with all pigment and getting rid of excess water so that it's a similar, just kind of like a glaze amount of water. And we waited a while because I was talking, but so I'm gonna have to go back and forth over this a couple of times to get that line up from that bottom edge of my first stroke. And then I'm gonna carry it all the way through to make sure that it stays even. And then scooping or dragging across any areas that I see where uh, color is collecting. And then I'll just keep going down with water. So I'm washing off that blue again, drying off any excess and grabbing that bottom edge and lifting it. I might have to go over it a couple of times, but you wanna make sure also that your streaks go all the way across from one edge of the paper to the next, kind of in this sweeping motion. And I'm keeping all of my strokes very parallel as well um, and I might go back over the whole wash as I make my way down just to make sure that it stays really blended and consistent. So I'm going to wash that down again with more water and dry off the excess water. Go to the bottom edge, a little bit more water. Go to this bottom edge and drag it down. keep going and depending on what you're painting if this is your sky or if you're doing a whole ocean painting you might need to stop or for the horizon line or keep going all the way down so you're gonna just do the same same all the way down your entire sheet of paper if you're doing a full sheet uh, covered with this gradient and as you can see there's a little bit of color happening over here it's a puddle of color so I'm going to make sure to go back over it soak it up so between every stroke or couple of strokes I'm going to my paper towel and getting or lifting the color off dabbing the color and and the water off the brush so it just is a clean damp brush and dragging it down further I can also go back on top of this color. Since I've been working my way back up here and there with um, some water, I'm re-wetting this top area that would normally be dry by now. And so that's how I keep my washes really wet for a really long time too at times, is just like continuing up the sheet as I go down to make sure that it stays like a little bit glazed. So I can go back in with thicker Prussian blue, the same color, just a thicker consistency and darken this stroke if I want to and go back over the remaining part or I can drip it like this. But if I want something that isn't so stark in contrast and I want to, this would be pretty for like a fabric design, but as like a landscape sky, you wouldn't really see this straight line like this. So then I would do exactly what I've already been doing. I'd get rid of the color dry off the brush and drag it down all the way down and make sure my strokes stay really consistent. So this is basically just glazing over what I've already done and making sure again to catch any streaks that are happening. I'm picking up orange from hitting my palette. I don't like that. I'm just going up and down the sheet of paper making sure my strokes are as straight across as possible so that I don't have any weird angle lines poking through. But all of these streaks should eventually fade because it's all still really wet. The edges of your strokes will blend out better. Grab my nice more water and I need more paper towel. It's getting This is just a blemish on the paper. That'll happen from time to time. With all brands of paper, you'll get a, a batch that just has a blemish on it or some, some sort of damage to it. Um, like the glue from the binding might get on top of the paper, which I think is what happened here. But it's just this one sheet in this whole block of paper so far, so it doesn't happen often. 
And then we got a little water droplet at the top that just snuck in there. So I'm just gonna grab more fresh and blue. But see how smooth all of that is? From one value to the next value, you don't have like blocks of darker blue, medium blue, light blue. It's even. And now that this has happened, we can still fix it because everything is still really wet. So I'm gonna go in with thicker, darker blue on top and blend that back in and all the way down. And you might be like, all the way down again? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you got to. So we're gonna be careful of those water drops. We might be able to bring it down just a little bit if we keep our brush really dry. And we're able to just kind of blend that in good enough. Let's get that cleaned up so it's just a really clean brush that's mostly dry. Just a little wet. I'm gonna scoop it up. And now, as it's drying, a lot of those lines that started to come up first, when I first put the strokes down, will fade a little bit better. But this may also be your ocean background, so you'll have waves on top of it. But that is how you get a really even wash or background. Um, using a Mottler brush or a wash brush, you wanna make sure that you're watching how it's drying, that all of your strokes are really consistent in your sweeping motion from one side all the way to the other side so you don't have any where you stop and there's a little line there from where you stop so you want to be really um, good about sweeping it all the way across and uh, going back over it as you're working your way down so that it stays a little bit wet but again this isn't very wet it's just like a little bit shiny when you lift it up to the light like it'll shine a little bit but it just kind of looks like a glaze or like if I were to mist my paper um, that's the shine that it has it's very very thin it's not puddly at all if you have any puddles on your washes you are going to get cauliflowers and hard lines to where those puddles kind of collect um, around the shape of the puddle, you'll get a hard line and that'll create a, heart, a, a cauliflower. So if you don't want that to happen, you do need to make sure to keep everything consistently wet as you work all the way down, but only a thin glaze. So dabbing off on your paper towel to get rid of that excess is very, very important. So that is how you paint a consistent and cohesive looking background or wash using watercolor. Um, again, a lot of what I see is this, they, they don't have a smooth gradient between your values, so really make sure you're focusing on going back over the entire sheet of paper and making sure to dab your, your excess water off on the paper towel or rag next to you. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Next week, I'll be covering the next steps in this painting, obviously, all the way throughout the month of March. If you haven't yet checked out my book, Everyday Watercolor Seashores, check out the link below where I've linked to all the different places where you can buy the book. You can also upload your order number. If it's before March 12th, 2024, you can upload your order number to a page on my website that we'll link to as well, where you will be then exclusively invited to a live painting party with me doing a few different paintings from the book. So make sure you check that out as well. And if, if you want more of this type of instruction or tutorial for landscapes and other things as well. We'll link to a few other landscape tutorials like my trees series and other things that I think would be very helpful for you. And I'll see you in next week's video where we expand on today's.